Pellis' defense got earlier, it. and he oh, sold the defense the there of Felipe Fogelin. That was the top of the second overtime, so Fogelin will have a chance to respond here. He needs a submission. He needs it very quickly, and I'm worried about that arm of Felipe Fogelin. Definitely grimacing in pain. It definitely, yeah, definitely took a little damage there. It was a little hurt. We got a full extension. 27 seconds or so. That's a rough ask. I like that forecast, I guess. Nice work. It's not official time. It's just a rough ask. Vogelin needs to make it work here. Griffith just needs to hold on. Vogelin definitely deep on it. Kyle's yelling too. They're both just know exactly what's on. Oh, there it is. Griffin holding on, trying to ride out the time. He's going to get his arm broken here. Oh, that is deep. Felipe Vogelin trying to go for broke by breaking the arm. The time is expired. Kyle Griffin to the finals, his arm cannot be feeling good right now, guys, Ooh. wow. Now, since the sub-only game is pretty much morphing into EBI rules, uh, now it's part of the daily curriculum, working on EBI overtime rounds, which is basically just working on your rear naked chokes and your arm bars defensively and offensively. Hey. Oh, he shifted oh. that angle nicely. That was just a it's instinctive. Oh, that is behind nope. his back. Got it. He's not out yet. Rolling. It's nice. You see what I'm talking about? Able that to escape. And it's just turning those spots into elaborate systems when you spend so much time. When you make that the sport, that's that's the sport. The sport is you're on the back in overtime and you you know, you're starting from there. You gotta be really good there and really good at defending. You can't cut weight without good food. The first thing we did during when the this this COVID thing went down was we uh, we packed up our shit and went to uh, Joshua Tree. So basically, spent three four weeks up there, um, you know, working on you know remotely, and then obviously fucking training Rocky style, climbing the desert, throwing big ass rocks. Uh, it was actually really fun. It kind of felt actually. Obviously, uh, but yeah, it was a uh, it was a lot of fun. After that, we came back here and then you know started training. Uh, still at home, but now that you know getting ready for this event, started training a couple weeks ago. Um, but I mean, we train OT all the time. It's like a slam dunk contest. Who I, who who wouldn't want to do that? That's like get you get to you get to show off your finishing mechanics and submission, like who who isn't game for that, you know? It's, that's, it's no, there's a no brainer for sure. Nobody that's in this event has been chilling for four months. Like, you know, you, you're just gonna go have fun and try to show your, your you know, the tricks you got and show your, your finishing mechanics and your ability to escape. And that, that makes it super fun. It's something we need nowadays, you know, uh, especially with all the shit that's going on. We need some, some sort of exciting event to, to bring everybody back to normal times. Yeah, last, last time, the combat match, I mean, that was a ton of fun. Um, Spent a lot of time training for that, uh, getting used to the slaps. I never really cared to do MMA, and I think combat jiu-jitsu is kind of like that hybrid. It's just violent enough. <laughs> um, going against Cody, Cody's super nice guy. I mean, uh, uh, MMA guy, I think he was 9-0 going into the fight, into the combat jiu-jitsu match. And, um, uh, so I knew he was just going to be trying to fucking pound my face into oblivion, but if I didn't get knocked out, there's no way that there's no chance that he was going to win, so. Take it for offense first, offense. Spiderweb. Spiderweb. Leg curl, leg curl, leg curl, leg curl, leg curl. The 
Gio, Eddie Cummings one, I think kind of most people. That was really a, a, a you know, great match for sure. Um, there's been a lot of really good OT matches actually. Um, that one stands out as the most like uh, sort of impactful, um, not just because Geo's 10th planet obviously, but just I feel like the gravity of that. That card was fucking crazy stacked to begin with. The audience, I think, was the most I've seen, like, the audience kind of be super ham about the stuff that's going on. It takes you out of your comfort zone. Like, I mean, I don't know, all the guys, all the top guys in the world, you look at ADCC, especially nowadays, all those dudes are EBI, they'll, they'll do IBJJF, they'll do, you know, sub only, they'll do all the different formats. Um, you can't, anybody could be, if you spend all your time doing one format, sure, you could be good at that one format, but I mean, if you're, if you want to test yourself, um, you want to, you want to try to, you know, expand your game a bit and try different, uh, different formats. Right. Sure, you got to change your game a little bit. It shows you who is best, usually who is best at getting a submission. For somebody who, you know, is always willing to put on a show, always willing to, to take risks, always willing to uh, step out of their comfort zone, right? Then you gotta do the, you got you have to do sub only, you have to do EBIOT, you have to do EBI format, you have to do IBJJF format, you gotta do uh, ADCC style. You to improve yourself, you gotta be willing to try all of the possible styles that there are, or all the possible rule sets. <laughs> Copping out behind a rule set is is kind of sad and uh, a bit unfortunate. Um, if you're going to enter an event, then you better make sure you're ready to uh, compete or excel in, the, in that rule set. Um, you got to be prepared. Just a shootout. Uh, we're seeing who has a you know who's got the best spider web control, back control, escapes, finishes, you know finishing mechanics. Um, and you take all the rest of the stuff and you take it out of the picture. And we see what happens when you leave stuff to the hands of judges. Uh, you take that out of the equation and yeah, that's what you get. You get who, who has, uh, and also, I mean, first of all, determining a winner by who has the better submission capabilities seems to me like a way more viable way to determine a uh, winner. I'd rather just have it all be out of the judges' hands uh, at that point. What I say to the naysayers is, how else would you rather win? It's just like extra innings in baseball. A fighter A goes first on offense. Fighter B escapes. Now fighter B is on offense and taps A. It's over. Any submission that happens at the bottom of the round is over. Any submission that happens at the top of the round, that other person gets a chance. Some of these people, you're not gonna be able to hold. Some people, at, once you practice these overtime rounds enough, it's hard to hold it. There's so many ways to get out. You spend so much time on it, and you learn, it just grows, and there's, there's systems to, to get out, and there's all, all these steps, and so over the years, just the escapes are gonna, you're gonna write books on just escaping the back, books on escaping Spider-Man. It's great, it gets, it grows. When you focus on it, it grows into a giant monster. So what, we, what we're focusing on is letting it go. If you want your arm to break, that's on you. All right, we're gonna let it go another minute. You better tap. If they hold it on too long, we don't want any controversy. So we're, I'm, I'm focused on the tap now. I want to compete in the first jiu-jitsu overtime because uh, it's, it's, it's an honor to be able to, to, to be the first one on anything. So it's great to be able to, to be on there and feel uh, the mats all over again and, and still be under EBI format. So the core team's been interesting because I, I, no one's been able to train, so I did a lot of uh, studying, which I didn't really do, out, do throughout my career of just training jiu-jitsu. So watching a lot of film, looking at instructionals, uh, I was actually writing, writing ideas down and 
creating this uh, jujitsu book that I have now, Jujitsu Journal, that actually, I and I tell a lot of my, my training partners and students that the break actually, I feel, made my jujitsu better. So it'll be interesting to be able to compete and see, you know, how, how that gap of not training affected my jujitsu in a competitive state. I train overtime positions um, every training session. Um, it's been uh, something that I've been doing ever since I've been on EBI. I, sometimes I use it as a cool down, just working escapes and working certain attacks, uh, working how to hold on, not, not so much actively, but like now that I'm back on the show, um, currently doing it after every, every training session. I feel like my, my leg pinch and my arm, my arm bar situations are, are very strong and it helps me get the finish a little bit easier than on the back. Competing just overtime rules is going to be interesting because a lot more explosion, a lot more excitement going on, just because there's there's a uh, a priority to escape or submit, where the just the 10 minute rule set in the beginning can kind of stall out. You kind of you know feel your partner out a little bit and go through your passing situations, maybe you know stall in in the sense of like you know I don't want to rush through a, a certain movement, but on in the overtime rounds it's 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 go. You got to go 100%. Someone's on your back, someone's close to your neck, someone's on your arm, someone's about to rip it off. So you gotta have a little bit more uh, explosion, a little more uh, angst to, to get out from that position. I don't think it's gonna be easy to compete. Uh, the preparation, it, it's gonna be a little bit condensed since you're just worrying about escaping the back and attacking the back, escaping the spider web and, and, and attacking from there. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot less to worry about, but in a sense, in a confined sense, there's a lot more to worry about. I have to be able to, to defend my neck, I have to be able to defend my arm, I have to be able to escape, I have to be able to get out at a certain time or, or have to match the time or be very aggressive in my attacks. Do I love somebody starting on my back? No, I work really hard to not let you get into my back, but to have a, a tournament or a competition where you start on my back feels a little bit unfair in the sense, but it's, a, it's an important part of it because I do need to practice how to defend my back when somebody's on it. So, you know, I may go through a training session throughout a week without getting my back taken, and, but I might really work in my back position. So it does, make me, it does make you force yourself to be prepared in that situation. It's hard to say who's gonna have an advantage, the escape artist or the, the submission hunter. I'm always hunting for the submission, so when you hunt for the submission, you kind of give up some, some windows for the escape. So I think it can go either way. I'm gonna say that since it's gonna be an aggressive kind of format, I think the submission hunter is gonna be the one that's gonna get the edge. You're either gonna get caught or you're gonna escape. So it brings a sense of excitement and energy that you don't really get in a regular 10 minute match where the pace may be a little bit slow and picks up. It may be like an up and down uh, type of wave kind of flow of a match. But EBI overtime, there is no up and down. It's someone's on your back and you have to escape. Or you're on somebody's back and you have gotta get them. I think it's great that USC Fight Pass is gonna be promoting the show. Uh, it's, good, it's good content for, for, for them. It's also a great way for jujitsu to be out there, for more people to have eyes on it. I've been training now 10 years. I'm, I guess I'm considered a vet in, in the sport, but uh, I have a lot of experience in competition, you know, all the way down from high school, all the way through college and, and into now I'm in my 30s. So I feel good about it. I, feel, I put in a lot of work. I work really hard. I work a full-time job. I still come out when I get out of work. I go to train. I, I don't get home until about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night every day. Uh, this is my life. This is what I love to do. I'm trying to get a little funky with it just to put up a show for everybody uh, and also find a, find a good way to, to come out on top. But I'm definitely going to be hunting for stuff. When it's live and when are the escapes? Just to be clear, to be clear. It's live if I have the back here with both hooks. If I had my hooks out here and I had this, it's still live. It's still live. He hasn't escaped yet. In order for him to escape, he's got to turn into me and clear his elbow on this side. If I have the elbow here, but we're facing him and I'm here, I can actually put a kamura on it. It's still live. You put a kamura on it. It's still live. If you lose the kamura grip, mm. and now he's out. But if you take that Kimura grip back to the back or back to a spider web, it's still live.
So the past couple of years, I've been competing at pretty much all the biggest tournaments in the world and having good results. Probably the most notable ones I've done uh, in the last couple of years, I'm ADCC European Trials Champion. Uh, first Irish man to represent my country at the actual ADCC itself. And I'm also the most recent Combat Jiu Jitsu World's Featherweight Champion. So obviously in training for that competition, I got to practice a lot with the EBI rules and I feel very comfortable attacking from the back, attacking from the arm lock and obviously defending all positions as well. My style is very submission orientated, so I think the rules fit really well into my style and I'm looking forward to competing there soon again. Ready to fight! Ready to fight! Hell, let's go guys! Yeah, the plan is always submission really and it, I really enjoyed the performance because I didn't need to hit anyone. I wanted to show going into that competition that combat jiu-jitsu or no combat jiu-jitsu, if you're a good grappler, you can win fights. So I'm really happy that I got to show that. And obviously, probably the thing I'm most proud of in the last couple of years is just the amount of submissions that I've got. I think over 90% of my black belt wins are actually by submission. So I feel like the tournaments, uh, EBI and the Jiu Jitsu Overtime and all these, it really feeds into my style because I get to show the things I'm best at, which is attacking and finishing with different submissions. Having a variety of rule sets and trying them out is kind of what makes Jiu Jitsu interesting. And I think a lot of other people share my thoughts. It's exciting to try something new because this is probably one of the best rackets that we've seen in a long time. So it's going to be definitely exciting to try something new. And again, as they say, variety is the spice of life, isn't it? I train the EBI rules and the overtime like specific positions pretty much every day, at least a little bit for the last three, four or five years. My emotions and my feelings aren't any different than if we were just in another position like half guard or close guard. You just keep going, keep trying to defend, keep trying to get out. And the same when you're attacking. The arm lock is brilliant. Sometimes you can get a very quick submission but I think it depends on the person. You might come up with someone who doesn't mind their arm getting taking a bit of damage, someone who has very strong joints. But from the back, once you get the choke locked or once you get close, the squeeze is just going to be too much, so I definitely have to go with the back. So I suppose the main difference between going straight into the overtime rules versus having a match first, everyone is going to have a lot more energy and it probably won't be as slippy. So I think the submissions, there will be even more chance of a submission and it'll be even harder to escape. So I think in the training you have to really take note of that, maybe do your overtime rounds at the beginning of training instead of at the end. It's going to be interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of submissions because of it and it's going to be a bit more difficult to escape. So it'll be nice to see um, how that goes down in the real event. And to be honest, I don't have much experience in competition with the actual overtime rules because usually I submit my opponents in the regulation. But in training every day, we start off in those positions and yeah, I've been doing it for years, so I'm pretty experienced from there. Ready, set, go! <laughs> Never mind it being EBI rules, it's just Jiu Jitsu. The ultimate goal is to submit the person. And especially from dominant positions like on the arm bar or the back, if you can't submit your opponent, but you're really good at other stuff, then what's the point? So I always make it a priority for myself, my students, my friends, my training partners, all of us really strong at finishing from those positions where we should be finishing. Personally, I want to be able to win in every single rule set and make sure that it doesn't matter if there's judges, if there's points, what position we start in, it doesn't matter. If we're grappling, I want to be able to submit you and that's it from any rule set, any position and yeah.
I think it's great that UFC Fight Pass support this kind of format and it's, it's just good that people want to see a bit of variety, you know? I think at the end of the day, in this tournament you get to see a lot of jiu-jitsu and we're getting straight to the point. We're starting in good positions going for the submission and it's, it's amazing to have uh, Fight Pass supporting this and just showing that I think Fight Pass they're concerned with just having exciting grappling matches with the best competitors in the world and it's a privilege to be considered one of those. The spider web is the other choice on the back. It's either rear naked choke or arm bar. Really, it should be, it's not even EBIOT, it's Jiu Jitsu OT. It's o overtime based on Jiu Jitsu. That's all it is. All right, so um, you can, the way we start here is, I'm cro you gotta know where to cross your feet. You gotta have, cro you gotta cross your feet at the shoulders. If you're crossing the feet like right here, this is not, the, this is a different position. If you're crossing the feet here, different position, different position. You got to know, you guys are grown men. You could either put the deep left hook in here and this hand has to be on the, the ground, not hooking the leg, on the ground. We're perpendicular, boom, I'm not leaning on him. The defense, real simple. There's only two choices. That's it. Either this one here, where you're grabbing the, look right here, the basic one, or, or this. Don't start going underneath like that, and people are coming up with different things. Can we start like this? <laughs> no. If you could do that shit after I say go, then try it. Try it then. Does that make sense? Now Spencer Mamey will have limited time to wrap up a submission. And we see Spencer Mamey. <laughs> <Alexa Aki. laughs> 15 seconds here. 15 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> never say Ready? never. Hey. Spencer Mamey on the arm of Pablo Alfonso. Tick tock goes the clock. Not his friend at this point in time. Oh. I wonder. Oh, oh he oh. almost got arm barred himself. Yeah, wow. wow. There it is. That's a wrap. Dude, I need to see that again. <laughs> My name is Pablo the Hurricane Alfonso. I'm a black belt representing Warrior Camp out of Spokane, Washington. Competed against one of the high level uh, Jiu Jitsu was Gio Martinez. And then after that, I competed combat Jiu Jitsu two times, which was one in 2019 and now in 2020. Um, I had a lot of fun with that tournament. I learned a lot, especially in the overtime against Spencer Mummey. That's still any man's, any man's match right now. Hopefully, I'll use that experience to the next tournament coming up. Oh, he's flying out. Yeah, tap, oh, nicely it. done. Pablo Alfonso. I learned how to be patient instead of just being quick and trying to escape. You know, uh, you just gotta be smart and have a good strategy to beat the time and try to escape. <laughs> Some real training right here on Warrior Camp. Mm -hmm. The quarantine didn't affect me that much. I have a small group. I have a lot of young guys that are keeping me young. I'm 38 right now, and I have a lot of youngsters under me. I like have Daniel Swain, which is fighting a contender series next month. Um, you know, I have a lot of good guys under me, and you know, I have purple belts, brown belts, black belts, and especially I'm coaching and training at the same time. It's a blessing for me, and and they're keeping me in shape, and I'm excited for the next tournament coming up. <laughs> Just doing you know traditional CJJ rules and now it's EBI rules in in the overtime format. I guess it really depends on how well prepared you were for the rule set coming in. My guess it's this, it's not going to be a big deal for these guys because they've been preparing to do it this way. I've been training OT position since I was competing EBI. I had to learn a lot of position and master those positions because when you get overtime you got to end up in a spider web or a back tape. And, you know, I, I've been practicing a couple of years with that, and I think in this OT coming up, I think I'm gonna be a, a, a threat for that division. Yeah. Great tap, nicely done. Pablo Alfonso Great. getting the submission there in the top of the third overtime. I think it's as hard as EBI, as hard as 10 minutes, as hard as five minutes or six minutes, either as a 
position or live from your feet. I think it's the same. Um, I was going through the position, it's pretty hard. You know, you gotta work your back escapes, then your arm bar escapes, and, and it's tiring. If you try that, do that to like about five rounds, you're gonna be tired. It's a lot of work. It's a new style, jiu-jitsu. And I like it, I like a crazy jiu-jitsu. I believe that I could take that belt home. I was a champion before and I could do it again. And I believe that I could take this belt and hang it to my warrior camp gym. I've trained super hard. I train five days a week, three times a day. I train with these youngsters, black belts, UC competitors. For my students, people around the world, I want to say just don't give up, don't be afraid of failure, be afraid of regret. I'm telling you because time is short. You know, I'm here right now, I'm still competing. I'm going to be competing over time Jiu Jitsu. And I'm 38 years old. I started when I was 20 years old and I didn't stop chasing my dreams. And look at where I'm at. I own a gym, Warrior Camp in Spokane. You know, I have a, 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 a MMA promotion. You know, don't, don't stop chasing your dreams. Because when you stop, everything ends and then you fall back. You don't work to fall back. And it's letting you know that everybody around the world, keep chasing your dreams. Let's hear it for Pablo, the Hurricane Alfonso. So it's just here, and then he just like that. He's got two hands. Yeah, can go you can go on the inside. Not at all. All right? Once I say go, you can. All right, then from here you start. It's live, if I go to spiderweb here, it's still live, it's still live, you're not done yet. He has to escape, he hasn't escaped. So you can go from here, and then you can go back over here. Boom, it's still live, he hasn't escaped. It has to be a clean, full escape. Not like a little escape, oh I escaped. Know this, keep escaping until the ref says, time! He's gonna yell. He, got he it. loses it. Wow. He got the separation, but then immediately moved with it, took away the angle for the hyperextension. Hey, Great job. And Cohen he get free. Freezing. Trying to peel the hand. He's got that bottom hip locked up. Hip locked oh, up. He's starting to spin. Out. He's out. He's good. He's got a lot of pressure, but he's not gonna be able to choke him from there, per se. It's just like all hip. There he gets free. It looked grim for Marcelo Cohen, but yeah. able to weather the storm. Uh, in my opinion, uh, this spider web is a little bit more dangerous when you're getting attacked because on a choke, you, you can hold it down and maybe look, hold it longer and not be able to, to break your neck. You might go out to sleep. But with the arm bar, there's no holding no more. Once the arm is stretched, that's it. If you don't escape it, you're gonna break your arm. So the spider web is way my opinion is way harder for the chief Interesting, he came in saying, I want to show my jujitsu is the best for self defense. So he defended himself sufficiently mm -hmm. and outlasted his competitor. If that's not uh, an Elio Gracie style, I don't know what it is. That's a wrap. The last combat jujitsu that I did that went overtime in my first round, and I won the overtime. Quarantines don't affect my training at all. I'm still doing my training uh, with personal people that are, that, are, that are close. And since I'm in Florida, uh, we're hoping again back and running, so the training is going hot. I gotta skip back and try hot. There's two minutes, okay? If you, if you skip in two minutes, you reset the same position, okay? And then we'll go for the next round. Good? We, we work at overtime positions once a week, and uh, I learn different little angles that as a black belt, usually it's hard to have somebody attacking on your back or somebody attacking on your arms. So now that we're training specifically for this, I have uh, been putting myself in bad positions that I didn't have it before. So that helps me so much in developing better techniques of escape better techniques of get out that bar, attack that bar, and attacking the back and choke. So getting my chokes stronger, my back escapes better. So that's why it helps me the most. Ready? Yeah. Go. Yeah. 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 Y
The guys will be fresh uh, going straight to overtime compared to, to a full 10 minute round and then goes to overtime. So I believe it's going to be more explosive the overtime this time. It's going to see more submissions, more actions, more escapes. It's going to be awesome. The guys will be starting fresh right into overtime rules. You can't just roll out of bounds. Because Eddie Bravo is an innovator. I, I like the, the way that he sees Jiu Jitsu and I feel like these uh, Jiu Jitsu over time allow us to develop other aspects of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that we might uh, not think as much. So we're gonna use this tournament to get back in back attack, back defense, arm attack, arm defense. So I'm excited for this new team coming up. It's just different, it's something new, something different that we gotta get used to to it. Haters gonna hate, you know? But at the end of the day, UFC 5 passes backing up everything. So I'm glad to be a part of the first OT tournament ever. So let they hate, let they talk, that's what they do. Let they do their job. When you locked up right away into a submission, it makes it exciting, making people want to look at it. Maybe uh, it helps uh, expand the Jiu Jitsu name across the world. You gotta have a good control, you gotta stay tight. If you go to, a, to try to rip arm bar and go a little loose, or you're a little loose on the backpack, if you give an inch, the guy's gonna escape. So it's gotta be a tight game the whole time. The grappler that's gonna have the advantage on this competition is the grappler that know how to attack back well, know how to defend back well, know how to attack arm bar well, know how to defend the arm bar well. So it's an over, overall grappler that knows all the positions of overtime. Not just escape, escape, but attack as well. You gotta know both. I've been training for my whole life. I born you on the mats. I born you for this. Okay? There's nothing else I do. I just do jiu-jitsu. I'm I'm have everything that it takes to be a champion. Maybe I'm gonna be the lighter guys, but these big guys are better watch out because the little guys are gonna sleep out of things. You can expect to see action from me. Going for submission, hitchhiker escapes, excitement. I wanna put on a show for everybody to see. When you're on defense in overtime, don't think that you're out. He's established his ride time by taking the defense first. Set, go! And I don't know if that would necessarily be his... Oops. Oh. Oh, he's going for it. No, he came up to the arm. He's out. He's out. He's out. Just keep escaping until the ref yells. Because the ref is not going to be... It's different. Like in MMA, the ref it wants to jump in. This, you're gonna save your life. You know what I mean? I gotta save your life in MMA. In Jiu Jitsu, it's like, what's gonna happen? You're gonna go, you're gonna pass out, pop your elbow. So what? You know what I mean? No, so don't hurry. It's not like, oh, stop it. Just like, let it make sure they escape. Make sure you escape. Just keep escaping. Because we, we reverse the thinking. We're gonna, we're not gonna call it till it's clear, till the escape is clear. So just keep escaping. Fogelin still attacking. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Instant. And don't like, I escape and look at the ref and go, what are you waiting to stop it? And then boom, you get choked up, but I escape. Just keep escaping. <laughs> keep escaping. Never trust the ref. No don't trust him. <laughs> don't, don't trust the ref. Trust me. I know that, by the way. Representing Team Took MMA and Team Taurus Jiu Jitsu, it is the Texas Zombie, Cody Owens. You're, you're throwing yourself into the fire uh, willingly. You know, you're putting yourself in training. I know myself, I've been putting myself into these really bad positions, having people start, you know, on the back with locked body triangles, with the choke locked in, you know, having different things like that. People in the spider web, yanking on the arm, you know, different positions where you're, you're tossed in the fire. So you're having to deal with that. Not all the different aspects that go into preparing someone, game plan, technique, all these different things. You're, you're going for the kill shot right there off the bat. Uh, most recently, I've competed in 
uh, Garcia Promotions Submission Hunter Pro. I've competed in Third Coast Grappling, and uh, the most recent one was the Combat Jiu Jitsu card back in March. Quarantine's been pretty wild, man, here in Texas. It's been pretty crazy. It's been, you know, we're open, we're closed, we're up, we're down. Uh, new cases, no cases, a lot of crazy stuff happening with it. But, uh, you know, I haven't been able to train with all the people that I'd like to train with, you know, due to, you know, some limitations. But I've trained with the people that I need to train with. Been going through it a lot lately. Obviously, in training for it, I trained quite a bit of the position uh, during the combat jiu-jitsu training. Um, very, very dominant position and really enjoying the training for it. You know, this is just every day, basically, people trying to kill me. The back is very crucial. Back defense is, is probably one of the most important things. Uh, if you can control you know, that's fine controlling on the back, but you gotta be able to escape. That's what we're going for, escapes and submissions. The face of Fogel uh, really squeezing this. Yeah, chin, chin. Yep, There's a one. tap! Definitely on the back, you know, Mataleon, the lion killer. That, I think that's probably one of the most dominant positions that you can get in in, in jiu-jitsu. On the back with a body triangle is a pretty tough day for anybody. You know, any type of uh, positions you get in where you lose position or someone gets to your back, you have to deal with that. Like, oh man, it got to my back. Now I, you know, I have to deal with the mental frustration of that and then try to get him off of my back. This is like, okay, he's already there. Now let's go from there. What do I have to do? Ready, set, go. Coming from an MMA background, you know, that's one thing we always have as an MMA fighter is don't let it go to the judges. You know, there's been some very iffy scoring and things like that in many high profile fights and I've seen it personally on the regional scene. Um, so that's one thing you try to eliminate in any form of competition. If there are judges that you depend on to give you a score or a final, uh, whatever the verdict, you, you don't want to make it go to them. You want to be able to finish it, definitively say I won whatever the match was or the fight or anything like that. So. Yeah, take the, take the judges out if you can. Again, you know, it's that kill shot. It's, we're, we're pretty much three quarters of the way to one of the most dominant, you know, submissions, and that's the rear naked choke, or it, whether it be the arm bar if you're that type of guy as well, but it, you know, you're, you're getting some crazy escapes, you're getting some crazy transitions from submission to submission because, of the, you know, the transitions have to be so tight. So I think, you know, that this highlights some of the best aspects of people's jujitsu. It, it all comes down to game plan. It all comes down to uh, what you feel at that moment is going to be the best opportunity for you. You know, there's coin toss, it's offense or defense, so you have to have both aspects and be prepared for both. But I think in the moment, however that match is going, you know, and how you feel is, uh, is really the best way to go about it. I'm looking to be as exciting as possible. I'm gonna try to steal the show, try to go out there and you know compete, level myself up with all these big guys. You know, I'm probably the only purple belt. I don't, I didn't, you know, really look too heavily into all of the other guys. I know some of the you know other big names that are going to be competing, and they're very highly respected on the competition scene. Black belts, you know, and these are guys that I'm looking to you know punch up and, and, and really try to go and display my team, my professors' jujitsu, and try to see if I can compete with. These guys and uh, you know maybe shock the world I'm all about it man anything that you know we can do to get more exposure out there for the jiu-jitsu community period is awesome you know there's some other you know services out there that do great things uh, fight pass I've had uh, I've, I've watched numerous events through fight pass and um, you know my family when I was in California, you know, back in LA in March, they were able to tune in and watch me live because they weren't able to be there. So having the ability to, you know, have family and have friends watch is really, really cool whenever they can't be there. But uh, just, you know, all the, 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 the stage, the platform and the notoriety that they're putting towards what, uh, you know, Master Eddie Bravo is doing with all this uh, jujitsu overtime, combat jujitsu, whatever he, he thinks of next. You know, if you're on the, in the top of the first round and you decide, you know what, let me hold them for three minutes before I get the submission. If you get the submission, now they got three minutes to get a submission. Mm -hmm. Instead of 
you go for the submission right away, get them in 30 seconds. Now, you don't even have to escape. All you gotta do is just hold on for 30 seconds. You don't even have to escape. Does that make sense? So, it can go either way. You know, you could, the strategy should be finish him as fast as possible, but if you're thinking he's probably gonna escape, so I might as well just hold him and get a lot of ride time because he's probably gonna escape, then you probably should ride him. You do three rounds. More than likely, there's gonna be a submission in one of those six tries. More than likely. Six tries, there's gotta be a, and if there's one submission in those six tries, the winner has nothing to do with the escape time. It only has to do with escape time if after three rounds, six tries, no submissions. Go. Position that offers uh, superior control. Well, you are immediately, you know, isolating that limb in spider web where when you have the back, you gotta fish for that joke. I think a lot of competitors would say no to the overtime because they haven't had someone on their back in, you know, however long because if they're a high level athlete, you know, chances are they haven't been in a vulnerable spot in a minute. So for them to think, now I'm gonna be put in this vulnerable spot, now there's gonna be a picture taken or a highlight of me getting tapped. So I think the vulnerability really scares a lot of competitors. They don't wanna be exposed in spots that they're hardly in. So I feel that that side of competitors, they're just, um, they just don't want to be, uh, they don't want their games to be broken down and you know, and now everyone knows how can we truly beat these guys. Um, to the guys that say yes, I feel like those of us that have been okay with EBI rules and are all for it, you know, we're, we see it as our defense is gonna get really sick, you know, after doing a bunch of overtime. Um, and my attacks are gonna be a lot better as well. I've specifically worked on these two spots that will allow me in the future, if I ever get it in a regular match or fight, I'm gonna be comfortable with this uh, very vulnerable situation. So I feel like I need to get out my, outside of my comfort zone in order to grow. For the guys that, that don't say yes, I'm not saying that they're not allowing themselves to go out of their comfort zone, but I see the vulnerability as being a, a big negative for them. It's Mount. Ray Ray, all the way Oh, but he's got an arm triangle. triangle. Allowing him to keep the position. It's short, not really. Uh, it's, it's there, I mean, it's there enough to hold him and keep it alive. Ray's got a slip that elbow back, wow. which he just did. You know, it's gonna be interesting when guys are dry and, uh, and, and not uh, burnt out on a regulation time period, so we'll, uh, we'll see how this plays out, you know, with uh, the competitors and how we do. You know, right now it's a weird time in, uh, in our history, so, uh, you know, I'm just eager to get back to competing no matter what the rule set is. Uh, I'm game, you know, you hear guys that are like, oh, I don't like the EBI format or I don't like points, or I don't like ADCC, which is half points, half submission, or even go on to like gi and no gi. But for me, uh, a true competitor is gonna, you know, get after it in any rule set, any facet. You know, I don't wanna regret not taking opportunities like these, especially when events are so scarce. Um, so it's, um, I feel like it's, it's pushed me to train a little bit harder when I can, um, I've actually been training like I'm in fight camp for the past like month and a half. So, um, you know, luckily I'm in, in, in the perfect timing to accept this invite. Yep. Able to get free is Real. In all future training leading up to this event, I'm gonna have to start off with someone in the armbar position or on the back and vice versa. Like every chance and opportunity, you know, any student, any teammate, You know, I feel like uh, the dry uh, clothing and being fresh with energy, that's gonna be a huge factor. Um, so, you know, I think in some of my classes that I teach, we're gonna start an overtime in the gi, you know, to really, you know, work on slipping out with all that cloth. So, both gi and no gi, I'm gonna, you know, really specifically work these positions.
You know, the uh, when it comes to the overtime and and and, and before when it, we had the regulation with other events, um, you know, it's if a guy does well in the regulation match but loses in the overtime, you know, a lot of people are gonna say, well, you know. You lost in a, in a position that you were vulnerable in, but that match you had was sick, you know, and you didn't, you didn't give up in the overtime. So I feel like there's a lot of positives on both ends, whether even if you lose a match, you know, because you're in the overtime, I mean, you got to overtime, you know, and now we're in a event that it's just overtime. Let's see what we all have, you know, defenses and attacks. I think defensively, um, a lot of people will go from my left side, but you gotta understand, I've had people attacking my, my weak side since the beginning, and, and out of that being a, a constant situation, I have developed a, a very good defense where I feel like now it's harder to catch the side, you know? So having the, the adversity of, you know, being born with one hand, I was able to really create some strong defenses and counters and escapes. I can see where people will, you know, want to attack that side, but for me, I'm, I'm game either way. Um, so, you know, they can choose what they want. The quarantine situation has uh, forced us all to really sit down and think about what we value the most and um, and really trim the fat off of you know I feel like I have really I'm more aware than ever who is in my inner circle and what I really want to do to pursue my goals and my dreams anything else anything else question no slams. No slams. The worst, the worst yeah, we don't want anybody breaking their neck. If someone has an arm bar. Oh, oh, that. No. Oh, okay. So if you're in a triangle and you stand up and you have the guy in a triangle and he's like sitting up and his head's up there, we're going to reset it on your feet. If you stand up, but he's not up here in a triangle. He's not up here. He's trying to get your arm. Which it's still live. And if he's trying to get your arm, can you slam him? No, no slams, no, no slams. slams at all. No jiu-jitsu. We come to do jiu-jitsu. We're trying to do jiu-jitsu entertainment for TV. A lot of people watching around the world take the money, win a regulation, simple. You can't player. throw someone though, right? Like yeah, a you suplex? Know, I'm the dirty guy that everybody talks about it on the internet, you know? Yeah. You're one of the guys that talks because of you, good jiu-jitsu. You could, you, could, you could double leg someone and dump them, right? Yeah, with control. Yeah, yes. with control. Nothing on the head or the neck. No pile drivers. So, so we're here, triangle situation here. I have my arm protected. Okay, you have to reset. They reset. He resets out of the triangle, though. Yes, out of the triangle, you stand up. If you're stand, if the guy, you let the guy stand up, and you're sitting on his shoulders, and you have a triangle, and he's standing up like that. We gotta let it go. My name is Frank Rosenthal. I'm a black belt and I'm representing the Hensel Gracie Academy and the Hensel Gracie Bayside Academy. The tournaments I've competed in with the EBI rule set are the Rise Invitational, the Ana Invitational, and the Finisher Sub Only. I've been in the EBI overtime quite a bit. Uh, I've been pretty successful in that rule set, both in the arm and back position. Uh, and it's a rule set that I feel really you know, confident in and, um, and uh, have a lot of experience doing. Uh, I want to compete in the first jiu-jitsu overtime because primarily there's a lot of really tough competitors in the bracket that I would very much like to get my hands on. Um, and also I think it's a very innovative and new idea that uh, I'm excited to be a part of. I feel uh, equally dangerous both in the back and spider web position. Uh, I think that I have a, a very good ability to finish from both and uh, can be successful from either one. 
I think that the difficulty of an overtime match versus a, a regular sub-only match is pretty much the same. Uh, I think each one brings their own unique challenges. Um, and, you know, either way, your, your escapes have to be on point, your attacks have to be on point, and there's really no room for error. So if you're going to win in, in this rule set or a sub-only match, I think your jiu-jitsu just has to be better than the other guy. It doesn't really matter, uh, you know, what the rule set is. Overtime is exciting because it, it has a very final um, end result to it. Um, there's really no ambiguity in, in who won. Um, you have a clear winner, um, and I think that's what the fans want to see, and that's also what the athletes want to see. Uh, there's no one really to blame other than yourself if, if you win or lose. Stop. Uh, I've learned a lot of good lessons from past overtimes, uh, some pleasant, some not so pleasant. Uh, the biggest thing I would say I've learned is that there's really no room for error and uh, it's important to be sharp throughout the entire overtime uh, you know, to make sure that you can put somebody away. I think uh, in order to win this competition you need to be both highly skilled in submissions and escapes. I don't think one outweighs the other. Uh, it's really important to have both down if, if you're going to win this thing. I believe I can win this tournament because I've won tournaments like this in the past. Um, you know, I've been to overtime a bunch in my career uh, and been really successful there. So uh, it's an area that I, I feel I can I can beat anybody in. Uh, you can expect to see from me uh, sound defense when I'm put in uh, defensive positions and, and a good ability to get out and uh, to be an absolute sniper in offensive positions, uh, putting people away from the arm in the back position. Is there like a, like drag racing, is it like yellow, red, green or whatever, or is it just like go, one one cue as far as like combat, like what's your, Reset. your go, what's your, what's your. Ready, set, go. I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm it's, it's ancient Greek. Like in overtime and stuff, what's going to be my cue to not get a false start, essentially. Ready, set, go. Go, go. So this will be my fourth EBI style event. Uh, I've competed in two combat jiu-jitsu worlds, uh, the featherweight EBI tournament once before. So I'm really looking forward to this new rule set, sort of a back attack, arm bar, submission, um, shootout. And I think that this kind of favors my style. I'm aggressive on the back, aggressive with the arm bar one of my top submissions. Until he's got the right time and then try to get the kill. Belly down, almost out. Spins. Almost out, adjusting his Anderson. He's got to get chest to Still chest, going basically. through. He's running out of space here. These guys are going to go right off the mat. My match with Kevin Burbrick was a fun one, went to overtime. I still, I wasn't super comfortable kind of with the EBI rules, the format. I, you know, I, I tried to hang on as long as I could. I didn't have the killer in instinct that I do now. And uh, I think people saw that from me when I faced Richard Alarcon. Went into top of the third and I got the spiderweb position and within three seconds I had snatched the arm and was able to secure the submission. He's got to finish him in three seconds. Okay. part of it. I want to put my jiu-jitsu on display for the world to see. I want to show people that I'm constantly improving. I'm evolving my game no matter where the fight goes. And on the back and with the arm, I'm a killer. And I believe that I have everything it takes to be the champion of this first JJOT. Go. Fortunately for me, the quarantine 
has been good for my training. Luckily, I have my brother alongside me the whole journey. And we're training with each other. No matter the mat space, no matter how many people are around, as long as we have each other, we're constantly improving and up in each other's games every single day. So I feel super confident coming into this tournament during a quarantine training camp. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be slippery in there. And it, it will be hard for people to hold on to me. Well, you better be sweaty. You better do a good warm up because you don't wanna be dry and have someone on your back nice and you know, tight in that position. You know, I, I assume everyone's gonna do the same thing. I assume everyone's gonna warm up well. Everyone wants to be slippery there. So, you know, that's what I'm preparing for. Every time we roll, we do overtime rounds at the end. So everyone's already slippery. So I, I know how to hold, I know how to grip. I know what I need to do in order to lock down a slippery opponent. It's only easier if you, you know, put that in your mind, but I, I'm expecting a hard competition. I'm expecting everyone to have shot arms by the end of the tournament. You know, people are gonna come with everything they have. And I don't think one is easier than the other. Everyone's still gonna bring it 100%. This format is a little more dangerous and a little riskier, but you know, I'm, I'm still expecting a battle. I, I love the EBI rolls. I love the overtime format. I think uh, it shows people, you know, the hard parts of jiu-jitsu and really what you need to prepare for, what sort of dangerous areas you, areas you need to prepare for. And, you know, people that aren't willing to come into this rule set and, you know, come into this format of a tournament just might not have enough belief in their jiu-jitsu. I think that everyone who enters this believes that they can win and and they're prepared wherever the fight goes. Start on the back, I'm prepared to win. I'll give you my arm, I'm prepared to win. You know, so I think that for those that don't want to do this, they're just they're just not where they want to be with their jiu-jitsu technique. There's a lot on the line, you know? It's it's um it's intense too, you know, when you know, it's just, it's, you get to give, the opponent takes your back or your arm, you're already, you know, like, mentally sweating bullets, you know, like, I gotta get out of this quick, you know, I wanna get this guy. So, you know, it, it's an intense situation, and I think that the crowd feels that, and the people watching, they feel that, they know there's, they know there's a lot on the line, you know, don't assume that your opponent can't just latch onto something real quick. The minute you think you have space, might be that second that you don't. So always be on guard, always be, you know, moving from one area to the next. Don't ever give your opponent an opening or a chance to lock something down. Damn, I'd rather just say no leg locks in overtime. That would just make everything easier. It would just make it easier. I, I, see, that opens up a lot of shit. It really doesn't open up anything. Okay, we're here. Okay. I break this foot here. That's good. That's a, that situation is good. That one's approved. Let's go situation by situation. Yeah, that's. What you really need is go from an upper body hole. Good. Step over. I can't do this. Oh yeah. And then start attacking. That's. Yeah. No. No. Once you let go of that, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. That situation though, that Frank Mir told that he got on Tank Abbott, that one's legal in overtime. I don't know if we had Omoplata yet in overtime, have we? Yeah, it's still live. In the Omoplata position, you can get there off Spiderweb, it's still live. This is San Diego, California. This is my shop, Pops Tattoos. And I work here with my wife and my good friend, Joe Garlic. And also we're in City Heights. That's the neighborhood. 
East San Diego or City Island. So my family's been here since the 80s. The technique is gonna win, dude. The technique, technique is gonna win above all. Above, that's gonna go beyond sweat or muscles. You know, it's not gonna be about who's the sweatiest or who has the most muscles. It's gonna be about who has the best technique. With Barrett, it was always about trying to get to the back. Well, it gets my imagination going, you know, so it's super, it's just like all day I'll be thinking about how I could refine my technique. And it's just crazy knowing how particular the rule set is. The first week of training, I felt like I better, this is gonna be embarrassing, man. Like I'm not ready for this shit, you know? Because my technique was fucking dusty. And so I was able to like, good training partners, I was able to get good really fast and my percentages got way better. And I was starting to come up with some interesting ideas for me, for me to play with. And so I think I got like some good, um, some good tools in my, in my toolbox. I think people's egos get in the way of putting themselves in a position where they might be able to lose, you know? And so who cares, man? Who cares? You're gonna be a legend, dude. You either, you put your heart out there, you know? And some people don't wanna risk. For me, I was never a fan of who won the most. I was a fan of who, who had something to show in their heart. And ultimately, I wanna be respected as a real martial artist, you know? Not just as a athlete, or a competitor, but as a martial artist. And I think it has to do with the way you carry yourself and what you do with the information that you have, you know. Cardio is gonna be a part of it, you know, and mental stamina and how much heart you got, for sure. Hopefully I put in the most hours, and I'm including the 15 years of jujitsu that I've done before. It's gonna be exhausting. It's gonna be nuts. I could already tell, I could already tell, man. Arms get gas. These Forearms right here, dude. This shit, these are on fire every day. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. By the second round, third round, and then you did three rounds, and it's the fourth fucking match. That's when it's gonna be like, oh shit, dude. Like, this fool is yeah. exhausted. Like, how much cardio did you do? Did you run? Did you lift weights? It's gonna come into play. I was able to step away from Jiu Jitsu for a couple weeks, for maybe even a month or two. And so that's why I like having other things to be in love with. So I don't get my heart broken so easily. <laughs> you just have a bunch of things that you do and then you just get slowly better at each one of them. And to me, that's fun, yeah. Yeah, man, I made these uh, prints, these jujitsu prints. And uh, dude, thank goodness I've been during quarantine, you know, yeah, so I was able to make shit. some money. Yeah, dude. I'll show you the originals because I, I sold so many of the prints, but these are the originals, right? This purple belt. The brown belt one. Yeah, these are the originals. And the black belt one. It's the only one that has some no gi going on. The heel hook. Yeah, and the straight arm bar. This is the EBI shit right here. Hopefully when you get all these competitors together, and something interesting happens and jujitsu gets to be elevated because of it, you know, in two, three years of this um, shootout style, you're gonna watch people get out of shit that coming up with new ideas that no one's ever seen before, you know? That's the word, so how high am I hand supposed to be? Can I start here? No, that's a very good here? question. The, the seat belt, the grip has to be right in the middle of his chest. So right here. People try to pull it up. If you go so right I here. I cannot do this. No, no. That's, Neither this, right? No. And please make it easy. Both, right in the middle. Both hands right in the middle. I'm going to go right behind you. Yeah. I'm going to put my knee right here, and I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to check. You, it's your responsibility, a guy on defense. You better be on that defense. Like, you better be extra on it. Not like, oh, I got three seconds to rest. I'm going to be chilling. Go, ready, set, boom. I wasn't ready. I'm gonna be right here making sure you're ready. Offense on point, def defense on point. And I'm gonna say ready, set, go. My name is Donnie Ortigo. I'm a brown belt. I'm representing Team Alpha BJJ. I've competed in IBJJF, uh, Fight to Win, WFC, 
Uh, I want to compete in this uh, tournament because it's my first. I also want to challenge myself. Um, I haven't competed in a rule set like this, so I just wanted to try something new and I've been wanting to compete into this tournament for a while. I train OT positions like once a week. I think with the OT rules, everybody's still fresh, nobody's exhausted, and everybody still has their strength, so it's gonna be very interesting uh, how this all plays out. Um, it, it can be either or. Um, I believe that it can be easier because you know that this is the positions we're gonna be in, that we're gonna be attacking from. So I think it would be easier because you know, we know what positions we'll be in. I like the fact that the, that the judges are not in the uh, picture because if you win, then it's credit to you, and if you lose, it's on you. So it's, it's good that we don't have to rely on the judge to uh, determine the outcome. I think it's awesome that UFC Fight Pass supports this uh, event because it'll help us to get our names out there, but it also helps educate MMA fans who are interested in jiu-jitsu and gives them an idea for whenever the fight goes to the ground. I train hard and just my mind is strong and I just I believe that I can do this. And I just believe that I'm one of the top guys here. A lot of speed, aggression, and um, just bringing in a fight. All right, gentlemen, first round. Ready to fight. Ready to fight. Hell, let's go. I'm really happy to be a part of Jiu Jitsu OT, whether it's EBI, Combat Jiu Jitsu Worlds. I want to be a part of it. Eddie runs a great show, uh, very professional. So I'm happy to be a part of the first Jiu Jitsu overtime event. 20 seconds, and he's still in uh, really strong control. You see now Daffron maybe starting to get his shoulder up down to the mat just a little bit. I've learned that you need to uh, practice the arm bar position as much as you need to practice the back position. Might be training a little bit less now that we're in a pandemic, but still training every day. Again, you know, hasn't changed much though. I believe the escape artist has the advantage over the quick submission guy. Defense wins championships. If you can't submit the guy, it's gonna be a lot easier to win. You're gonna, you know, does help to actually escape the back control or the arm bar position. But again, if you can't submit the guy, it's gonna be really hard to win. Getting ready for Jiu Jitsu overtime is going to be just as hard as getting ready for combat Jiu Jitsu or an EBI style match. If you put the same amount of time in as you would for any other match, it's gonna be just as difficult. Obviously we have less things to focus on where we just have two general positions, uh, back control and arm bar position, spider web. So we have a lot less variables coming into play and you just have to work the defense and the offense. But if you're putting in a similar amount of time to those things, it should be equally as hard to get ready for it. In like submission only matches where it's like a 50 minute match and by the time we get to the 50 minutes, nobody really cares about the conclusion or you know, like a two hour match where it's like, you, if you're a spectator, you want like a clear, definite end. Um, and sometimes, you know, one guy gets the better of the grappling exchanges and regulation, then we go to overtime, and then he gets the finish within overtime. Uh, it's similar to college football, where, you know, both teams get a chance at finishing, they both get the ball. So it has a clear conclusion, whether it's a, you know, submission, hopefully, or it's on writing time, you're gonna know who won and who lost. So, you know, that's why I believe the EBI overtime rules are so exciting. Wow, what, a, what an amazing event to be a part of, and, uh, and especially during this uh, time when we can kind of just forget of what's going on. Just for, just for a couple seconds, you know? Just for some moments. I've won tournaments like this in the past. Um, you know, I've been to overtime a bunch in my career, uh, and been really successful there, so 
Uh, it's an area that I, I feel I can, I can beat anybody in. To improve yourself, you gotta be willing to try all of the possible styles that there are. Guys are getting better at, at hunting for the neck and getting those chokes in and being able to uh, get a good finish. You know, having the mental fortitude and the physical grit it, it is something that I look to display. I'm not doing these bicep curls for nothing, lads. <laughs> I've been training in these positions for years, years, and I've mapped it all out. I've thought about it so much. So if I don't win this tournament, I'll be pretty disappointed, to be honest, but there's some great competitors in there, and I'm very confident in my skills, because as I said, I've been working these positions every day for the last few years, so it's gonna be really exciting. Yeah, so I'm gonna, hopefully, when you get all these competitors together, and something interesting happens and jiu-jitsu gets to be elevated because of it, you know, in two, three years of this um, shootout style, you're gonna watch people get out of shit that coming up with new ideas that no one's ever seen before, you know? From the creators of EBI and Combat Jiu-Jitsu, a new challenge emerges. Who can submit who the fastest in two of the best positions in Jiu-Jitsu? No points, no advantages, no judges, and no regulation time. 16 of the best featherweights will collide in the ultimate rear naked choke shootout. Jiu-Jitsu OT, the featherweights. Sunday, July 19th, featuring Marcelo Cohen, Elias Anderson, Gabriel Daffron, Keith Gregorian, Mike Davila, Luis Quinones, and CJJ World's 2020 featherweight champion, Tom Halpin. Also, Frank Rosenthal, Ethan Krelliston, and more. Plus, a special EBI rules match featuring the amazing Grace Gundrum versus Black Belt Rising star, Danielle Kelly. Sunday, July 19th. Watch the world premiere of Jiu-Jitsu OT, live and exclusive on UFC Fight Pass.